me story. I touched a little bit early on. This is 68. I start as a contractor at 67 exactly. 60, yeah, 68. Sir. Then, after I made some good money, so I feel this is a high risk business. First, the margin you don't control all. You depend on the market and so on. First, second, you have like Michael Porter. Of course, at that time, I don't understand Michael Porter. I have a single customer. I feel uncomfortable. If my single customer say tomorrow I change the mind, change the people say, so Kanto, good luck, I don't buy from you. I'm dead. So I was looking around how to diversify. What's the next business? Then suddenly I found out, hey, all this forest, they cut the lock, they sell it. But at that time, Indonesia, remember that 65, 66? They start to be law and order, 67, 68, 69, 70, country a bit better, and also help a little bit by oil price. Shoot up. I still remember the first oil crisis because Arab embargo from less than $3 to $11, $12. That's where at that time. So the country was start to develop. But when your country start to develop, what do you need, basically? Food, clothing, shelter, and travel. So, so when I see the shelter made out of wood, I see something very abnormal. Indonesia export 20 million kilometers of lock, but produce zero kilometers of plywood. And they import from Singapore, because at that time, if you remember Jin Tiong, you know that Jurong have four or five plywood mill and process a lot from Indonesia across the Sumatra. And then sometimes, because we are better quality, we, exp we import from Taiwan. From Korea not, but Taiwan, the farthest one. And all this lot export to Japan, to Korea, and then they go through straight Malacca in front of our door, sell to Europe. And half of that lock is a waste. So I said, it doesn't make sense. Why should we import this? Why not produce ourselves? But nobody wants to do it at that time. You know why? Because the simple thing to make money, you cut the lock, $50 cost, you sell $150, $50 tax for government, I still make $50. So the government had no incentive to stop it because there is a tax revenue, being the country just start and need a lot of foreign exchange, and the uh, a logger company who involved this, they have no interest to, to process it. But I see it, if I process it, so I did it. So I got the license, in 75, I'm in that business. So the government actually very appreciate to do that, add the value and so on. So even if at that time, President Suharto, I'm a young man, 26 years old. He come to my factory, bring seven ministers, three helicopters, go there, I want opening ceremony. Of course, there's some process, so opening ceremony. That's the first time. The first time I see all these big men, he asked me very straightforward, simple question. How much is your selling price? What's your cost? How many people you employ? And then, how big the market? They all question. I say, no, we export 20 million kilometers. That means there's a market. <laughs> so no question, because somebody already 20. The meal I, put, I, I build only 100,000 kilometers intake. But at the time, the country produced 20 million kilometers.